Purdue, thank you so much for joining us. You thank have you announced agree. plans um, to expand, particularly your, your footprint in West Africa in the month of September. Take us through what you're planning to do and how it's going. Okay. Um, in fact, it's already operational. Uh, the launch will be in September. Uh, what we're planning to do is to replicate the, the facilities that we have here in South Africa, both at Lanseria and, and Cape Town. And the fundamental things we're going to do is we're going to sell aircraft, we're going to maintain those aircraft, and we're going to manage the aircraft that we sell for those who want full management. Now, of course, um, many people are saying that while South Africa is the largest economy, uh, for people looking for growth areas, the, you know, the, the money is not just in South Africa, it's elsewhere on the continent. Uh, which um, particular you know, areas on the continent is particularly um, you know, uh, bullish in the sense that you know, there's, there's this place people want to do business and you can, you can expand? Okay. Uh, well, clearly the continent is very resource rich. You know, Oil and gas is one of them besides other minerals. Uh, so those are the areas that clearly are going to grow. Uh, and we've seen a lot of uh, foreign investors, foreign mining companies showing a lot of interest and development in Africa. Uh, Nigeria clearly is one of the oil producing countries in, the, in this uh, continent and that's a growth area for us. So we really follow and, uh, and take along with us in, in, in some instances those type of businesses, particularly in the resource mm -hmm. area. Now, of course, the aviation industry has, um, you know, taken a knock in some senses uh, in the South African domestic market. We've seen the closure, for example, of Valve Sky. What makes you so confident that, that your plans are not going to be affected by the way in which, you know, some of these domestic companies have come in since the, the market was liberalized? Yeah, we play in a very different space to the commercial aviation that you're talking about, the SAAs and Kalulas and the uh, Velvet Sky. <laughs> uh, we play in a very niche market where we uh, charter aircraft and sell air business jets. So we're talking about business aircraft that are used by business people, by corporation, to get to places to have meetings, to eventually end up in a business deal. Uh, and that's where we focus. So that has not been affected nearly as much as the commercial airline. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people that want to do business, that have the resources to do that business, mm -hmm. and they charter from us. One of, one of the issues that affects um, you know, aviation is the question of safety. And Africa doesn't necessarily have a very good track record when it comes to safety. From where you sitting, Mr. Poji, what is the, the outlook in terms of, of aviation safety in Africa? Are you confident across the countries that we've got the necessary systems in place to you know, secure uh, uh, um, you know, airline safety? Look, in the last couple of years, African continent has made huge strides in uplifting the safety and the standards in aviation. Not all countries are participated because there are two things that affect the standards, and that is political will and budget. So, you know, to maintain safety standards, to maintain those levels that are acceptable by European and U USA authorities, it requires budgetary spend. And not all governments have the willpower or the, polit or the resources to do that. But certainly if you look at those countries that we are talking about, like Nigeria, like Angola, uh, there has been a lot of political will and to date those standards have been raised. In fact, in the last three years, Nigeria has probably been one of the most conforming countries. Mm -hmm. If you were to look at the worst performers, if we were to single out countries in terms of safety, who would that be? Oh, that would be difficult. But what I can tell you is that generally in Central Africa, there is a lack of infrastructure. When I talk about a lack of infrastructure, I'm talking about a, a lack of communication with the aircraft. For example, radar systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so many places in Central Africa, uh, you're relying on the pilot to communicate with pilots of other aircraft in the sky. Uh, the radar systems don't exist. So that's probably the biggest area that one has to focus on. We've recently formed the uh, African Business Aviation Asso uh, Authority or Association, uh, which ha we have our first committee meeting now on next week on Sunday. Uh, and our focus is going to be to make sure that governments and authorities understand the importance of raising the standards on this continent. Mm -hmm. uh, up until then, of course, people like ourselves have to be self-regulating. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Poji, what is the forecast uh, for your industry looking forward? Well, in a, clearly we're in a recession. The US... The on, Eurozone. And the Eurozone even more. Uh, and Africa is not immune to that. But given the resources we have, uh, given the potential growth 
that we can get out of Africa and of course the interest of foreign investments, I think we're not going to feel it as much. So the forecast going forward, certainly for the African continent, I think we will soon get back to the levels we were prior to 2007. So, but I'm afraid that I don't think the Eurozone is going to go away suit. anytime yeah. soon. Mr. Poji, thank you so much for your time. We'll have to leave it there.